Welcome to the Quick Start video series for QA6. My name's Donna Hansen. In these tutorials, I'll show you how to set up QA6, and then we'll explore its new features and considerable capabilities. Whether you're a first time user or an experienced producer, you'll find helpful tips and techniques to improve the quality of your productions. These videos are intended to serve two purposes. First, They'll illustrate basic operations to help the new user operate Cubase quickly and avoid common mistakes. Second, these videos will illustrate the new features in Cubase 6 and demonstrate some techniques to help the advanced user get the most out of Cubase in the least amount of time. Over the next two hours, we'll be covering the following subjects. In part one, we'll demonstrate getting started, Getting connected. Basic audio recording. Basic MIDI recording. And basic mixing. In part two, we'll demonstrate advanced audio recording and processing, advanced MIDI applications, Steinberg's new note expression technology, advanced workflow techniques, basic scoring techniques and generate tablature, and the use of remote control devices, quick controls, and outboard equipment. Let's start with the basic requirements you'll need for these video tutorials. Please also refer to the minimum system requirements of Cubase 6, which you can find printed on the Cubase 6 box. At a minimum, you'll need a PC running Windows 7, or a Mac running OS X 10.6 Snow Leopard, a USB e licensor. You'll also need a My Steinberg account, which you will create during the registration process, an audio interface and a microphone, a MIDI interface and a MIDI input device, speakers, an amplifier, and headphones. Configuring the software is a very simple three-step process, installation, activation, and registration. Place the installation CD into your computer and follow the on-screen prompts to activate your license and register the software immediately. Once Cubase is installed, double-click its icon to launch the program. Once Cubase opens, the main screen you'll see is the Project Assistant. The six tabs along the top provide quick access to a wide variety of project templates for different activities. The recording and production templates are preloaded with tracks, instruments, and even drum parts to get you going quickly. When you record, Cubase streams the audio directly to your hard drive. This means you'll have to tell Cubase where the project file will be saved before you can begin to record. A Cubase project is actually made up of several parts. The two most important parts are the project file and the audio folder. The project file contains all of the settings. The audio folder contains the actual audio files. The menus at the bottom of the Project Assistant let you choose where Cubase will store your project. You should start a new project folder for each song to help keep things neat and organized. Select Prompt for Project Location if you want to manually create your project folder. Or select Use Default Location if you want Cubase to create the project folder. Let's start off with an empty project. We'll use Prompt for Location and click Continue. Now let's navigate to the desktop and create a new folder called My First Project. Click Create, then click Open. The main work area shown here is called the Project Window. Let's create a few tracks to get oriented to the Cubase environment. Open the Project menu and hover over Add Track. 
the drop-down menu displays all of the types of tracks you can create. Let's select Audio Track. Let's create three audio tracks at once by increasing the count from 1 to 3. We're going to make each of these mono tracks by changing the configuration from stereo to mono. Then click Add Track. OK, now let's take a look around and focus on a handful of key terms and important icons. Along the very top of the screen are 12 menus. These are always visible when using Cubase. You open them with a single click. Let's reopen the project menu. You can also access the menu items with key commands shown to the right. For example, the project setup function can also be opened by pressing Shift and S. If you see three dots after the menu item, it means another menu will open with more choices, like this. If you don't see any dots, then the action will be carried out as soon as you click on the menu, for example, the Notepad function. If you see a black triangle, like the one next to Add Track, a submenu will appear when you hover over that item. Menu items shown in gray are not available at the current time. Let's look at one more very important menu item, the Help menu. The Help menu has submenus for all of your manuals. It has shortcuts to numerous online resources including updates, support, and a forum, and it has a search function. Let's search on the keyword MIDI. Cubase now shows us two types of results, menu items and help topics. When you hover over a menu item, Cubase will guide you directly to that function's location. When you click on a help topic, Cubase opens a text screen with more information. Moving on to the project window, the top center area of the window frame shows the default author and the project name. Since we haven't saved this project yet, the project name defaults to Untitled 1. The next row of icons is called the Toolbar. The Toolbar contains icons for commonly used functions. You can right-click anywhere on the Toolbar to see a list of active sections. You can also open the Setup window to further configure the Toolbar. For example, let's hide Automation Mode by selecting it, and moving it to the Hidden Items list. We can also rearrange the information. Let's move the Time Display to the right end of the toolbar by selecting it in the Visible Items list and moving it down. Cubase has set up menus for many other functions that you can configure just like this one. One quick note. You can hover over just about any icon and Cubase will display a tool tip that tells you what the icon is, like this. This icon is the Window Layout button. This is a very important control and you'll see it throughout Cubase. When you click the Window Layout button, the active window dims and a selection box appears. Here you can choose which panels you wish to display in a given window. In this example, you can see that the Info line and Inspector are visible, but the Status line and Overview line are hidden. Here's how it works. Anytime you see the Window Layout button, remember that there may be additional panels that are not being displayed. At the top of the project window is the project timeline. If you right-click on the timeline, you can select what units it will display. If you left-click on the timeline, you'll move the project cursor to that location. And if you click and drag, you can zoom in and out. There are other ways to control zoom. We'll look at those in a moment. Two of the most important tools in Cubase are these white triangles called locators. Locators define the starting and ending points for your project. Click and drag to adjust the locators. If the locators are placed correctly, the area between them will be light blue. 
If you transpose them, the area between the locators turn red to alert you to the problem. At the left edge of the project window is the Track Inspector. The inspector provides quick access to the controls and settings for that track. The functions are organized under 11 collapsible tabs. To open a tab, click it. To close the tab, click it again. Some track functions are duplicated in multiple locations. The first tab is open by default. Here you'll find the track name, a duplicate set of track controls, as well as controls for track volume, stereo panning, track delay, used in synchronization, and controls for setting the track's input and output source. We'll look closely at these features in later chapters. This icon is the Edit Channel Settings button. It's a very important control, and you'll see it throughout Cubase. Whenever you see this icon, you can click on it to open the editing function for that area. Finally, we have a few more basic navigation tools. You have standard scroll bars for horizontal and vertical viewing. You can click and drag the right-hand corner to resize the project window. You also have a set of zoom controls. Click and drag the triangles to configure the horizontal zoom and track height. You also have preset zoom levels available from these pop-up menus. That's it for our first chapter. Now let's move on to chapter 2 and get Cubase connected inside and out.